Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome back to City Skylines. I certainly hope you're having a good one, because, man, I'm excited for this. It has been a while. It has been a couple of years since we last sat down and did a Let's Build, and of course, of course, this is a tiered city. This is tiered city 2019 edition and this isn't just because i felt like it there was an idea behind this build and the idea was essentially what would a tiered city look like if i built it in 2019 with the tools and mods and items that we have in 2019 and it turns out it looks kind of cool at least I think so. I mean, it's still a tiered city. It's still pretty symmetrical. It's still just this monolithic, unrealistic mess of roads. But it's still fun. I still like doing this. And it was actually really nice to dive back into the creative side of City Skylines. Even if, you know, the stuff I do doesn't necessarily hold a candle to the stuff that other people can do. Because, wow. It's like, they're, they're the last three years since I did three and a half years since I did the tiered cities, um, there's just been this explosion of creativity within city skylines within the community. I mean, the subreddit alone is incredible to look at sometimes. Never mind the YouTubers out there that do incredible work as well. Um, I'll actually link a bunch of those in the description as I've done before in some of my cities videos. I'll link some channels that I really enjoy that I think are really talented and that I think you should check out. But talking a little bit about the build that's going on right now well you'll notice uh, it doesn't have any tiers right now that's because i'm laying everything out flat and one of the most important mods to make this work is actually going to be move it this time when we did the original tiered city i had to build from the top down to make it work with this one i can build from the bottom up i can lay it out completely flat and then I can use move it, as you can see, to move the keys up to the height that I want them to be. Because this time, instead of just cliff faces, I'm using keys. Because again, it's going to be this monolithic structure. But that was one thing that I couldn't do in the original tiered city. You didn't have keys. You didn't have move it. It was just from the top down. Measure it out and hope you've got it right. And it sort of worked back then, but this, I think, just looks so much better. Obviously, I've got to clean up all the edges and all that stuff, and that's still something we're going to be getting to shortly in the time lapse. But it's just so interesting. It's so fascinating kind of thinking back to the things I had to do back then versus the things I can do now. Interestingly, this build actually took longer than the original Tiered City did even though I have more tools and things available to make it easier. It turns out things like prop line tool and move it and all that, whilst they make the build easier, they make it so that you're kind of inclined to refine it a lot more. So even though it should be quicker, it takes longer because you have the ability to get it more precise, if that makes sense. Now, I do want to talk about that cut in the time lapse there. Uh, there's going to be a couple of those in the video because there's a lot of tedious stuff. There's a lot of just placing roads in the same pattern over and over again. So I cut a bunch of that out. Same with a lot of just placing buildings over and over again. I cut a bunch of that out. We'll talk about that when it comes up because at the minute, it may look like I'm adding another lower tier to the city. And that's not actually the case. This is going to be a moat because in my mind, this city kind of has a story and this is going to sound really lame and sci-fi and dumb and like a lame fan fiction but i want to tell you the story anyway because i think it it helped me sort of figure out what the city was going to be so in this world let's say um let's say the world sort of ended 250 years ago and you know ever since then the world ended 500 years ago whatever but for the last 200 years this city has become the bastion of whatever of humanity and I think that because you'll see shortly, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a bunch of trees around it. I just, there's something about this monolithic structure coming out, out of a, coming up out of a super dense forest that just screams sci-fi adventure, other world, end of the world, post-apocalypse. Like there's something about it that I just, 
I can't help but feel it looks so... It's not... Sci-fi is not the specific word, but it's just... There's something about it just works in that way for me. That kind of like end of the world, last bastion of humanity. They built this plinth to put themselves on. And uh, this is like the only safe human settlement, which is surrounded by dense, dangerous forest and all that stuff. It's, it's uh, like I said, it was a pretty lame story, but that's kind of, I don't know. That's, that's kind of what it is in my mind. Now, what I'm doing at the moment, you'll notice is putting in some terrible roads. Uh, this city, as I'm sure you may have been able to guess already, is not exactly what I would say is what I would call entirely functional. Uh, it is purely for the aesthetics, and I've had people say in the past about the old tiered cities, it's like, why did you even build this if it's not functional? I built it because I thought it looked cool, if I'm totally honest. And, uh, if anyone wants to try and make this thing functional, let me tell you right now. By the end of this, we're going to be minus, uh, we're going to be getting minus $100,000, uh, on our income, and I dread to think if you were to turn off unlimited money, how little money we would have. But if anyone wants to try, there will be some links in the description below. You can go download this, you can go download every single modern asset I use to make it, and you can certainly try and make it, uh, make it functional. And if you do... Twitter.com slash conflict nerd. Tweet me every every step of the way towards making this functional. I just, I gotta see that. Now, what I'm doing at the minute is obviously not a part of the tiered city. This is sort of a mountain range thing that I wanted to build around it. And the reason I wanted to do this was, again, to sort of just give it this idea that there's a... a there, there's this weird world around it. Like there's this big mountain range surrounds it. And I know this... I mean, you know, mountains aren't otherworldly. We have plenty of mountains here, but I was still leaning into that sci-fi sort of adventure vibe for this. And for me, sci-fi is sort of Star Wars, Star Trek, kind of this dystopian sci-fi thing or whatever. And then adventure for me is like Lord of the Rings, right? And what have you got in Lord of the Rings but big mountains, right? New Zealand, where all of that was shot, is this beautiful, beautiful country, and the landscape in the Lord of the Rings, I mean, if I could recreate that in City Skylines, oh, oh, I would love to be able to do that. I would love, that might be a project, trying to recreate the landscape of Middle Earth in City Skylines. I might do that sometime, if someone hasn't done it already, and in which case they've probably done it better than I'd be able to do anyway, but that's beside the point. Anyway. Uh, talking a little bit more about the landscape at the minute, just going through, trying to get rivers flowing again, because this map, I'm pretty sure, is the same map I did the original tiered city on. I might be wrong, but it kind of reminds me of what I think it was. Um, just trying to get rivers flowing, and then trying to put in a bit more mountain here, because part of what I wanted to do as well was have it go out into the water. Uh, I want it to sort of be rising up out of the water in the ocean and the rivers, and I just wanted it to be this big, imposing kind of mountain range. Uh, and I keep hitting my microphone. I've had a really bad time doing this recently. Uh, I talk with my hands. That's the problem. I talk with my hands, and my hands are like under the microphone, so if I get really into it, I hit the microphone. It's not intentional, but uh, it does happen a fair amount. Anyway. Like I said, I wish I was better at making mountain ranges. I know that on the City Skylines YouTube channel, I think Flux Trance recently did a tutorial series over there talking about how to make mountains, so I should probably go check that out and actually get good at making mountains, but we'll see. I mean, I could watch the best tutorials in the world, and Flux absolutely does some of them, uh, and I'd probably still be terrible at them, so you never know. Anyway, uh, another cut in the video just there. You just missed a bunch of trees, basically, if I'm totally honest. Nothing super exciting, just a whole bunch of dense trees. You'll see them at the end of the video. We do, of course, have some cinematics coming up, but right now we're diving into placing buildings. And uh, I wanted to get these observation towers in here. And you'll notice that unique buildings aren't so unique in this tiered city. They are, in fact, pretty, pretty common. Again, that's move it for you. Move it allows you to just 
you know, select it and then control C, control V. You can just copy paste the unique buildings to wherever you want them to be. And a big part of that for me was getting four of those observation towers. We also have four fusion reactors because of course we need those. But again, I was still in this sci-fi vibe. So four fusion reactors at sort of the peaks of the city with these observation towers, it kind of just, it kind of just works. And then of course, something else I wanted to do was not really do any zoning or buildings on the main roads. So that's why at the minute you're seeing me put in a bunch of these, uh, I guess paved sort of concrete looking roads inside all of my avenues. That's because every building that I want to place, like I said, is going to be going in one of those just to try and help traffic a little bit. Not that traffic really matters. Not that traffic was ever part of my concern or anything I was worried about because again, to be totally honest, it's just, it just, it's never traffic in this kind of build is just never going to be never going to be good. Now we are going ahead and putting in a little bit of zoning here. I actually decided to go with the self-sufficient housing. That's why we're doing some districts here. I wanted self-sufficient housing for the housing tier. I also put in IT cluster down there because I wanted two things. Number one, I wanted buildings that looked a little bit a little bit futuristic and there's something about the self-sufficient housing with all the the grass and the plants all over them that just looks a little bit a little bit sci-fi. I know that's silly because that is a thing that happens, but it just looks a little sci-fi. And then the IT cluster buildings, obviously the giant skyscrapers just kind of play into the idea. They just give us a little bit more height as well. And that's kind of what I wanted. So that's essentially why I went with all of those things. It just kind of worked. I think I also put in some generic uh, commercial zoning somewhere. I don't exactly remember where I did it, but I know at some point I put in some generic commercial zoning and uh, oh, speaking of, well, zoning, this is nothing to do with zoning. The buildings I'm placing at the minute, you'll notice are all identical. I found these in the workshop recently and I don't remember the exact name of them, but again, if you go down to the description, there'll be a collection down there with everything I've used. Uh, these buildings all look identical when placed next to each other. But they all do different things. Some of them are hospitals. Some of them are police stations. Some of them are fire stations. Some of them are technically parks. Some of them are schools. Some of them are bus depots. And they all look identical. And it's so... It's so cool. I absolutely love it. Because what you end up with is something that looks really urban and they are completely reflective so they kind of look a little again i don't want to throw around the word sci-fi modern maybe is a better word but this city is anything but modern it's completely unrealistic so i'm kind of torn on what it really is but they just work it gives me something that i wanted which was a level within the tiered city dedicated to services and that's exactly what i got and i got it in such a way that all the buildings matched and it wasn't just a a combination of all these different service buildings desperately trying to work together. So it just, it absolutely worked for me and I'm really happy with that. So that's why those buildings are in there and are a bit weird looking. And I suppose it does tie into the story that I had for the city as well, because another part of this whole like sci-fi idea was the world didn't just like, and when I say the world ended, I mean, there was like a catastrophic event that, you know, did whatever. But my idea as well was that technology just stopped. Like it didn't advance super drastically. Like certain fields did like medicine, maybe uh, obviously engineering and construction advanced massively. But things like I don't know, just general infrastructure. Like we still have buses 500 years later. We're still driving cars because all that kind of just stopped. I don't know. It's it really, my story doesn't make any sense, but that's kind of, that's, that's kind of why I like those buildings as well, because they tie into the idea that maybe this is just one big facility. Maybe this is whatever. It just kind of works. I, I know my story is really lame, but I just, I don't know. I had some fun with it. 
anyway, what we're doing at the minute, I, I need to remember to talk about what's happening on the screen because that's how commentary is supposed to work. Uh, what I'm doing at the minute is just throwing in a bunch of, a bunch of curbs, really, planting in a bunch of concrete as well because this whole thing is supposed to be a constructed thing and I guess concrete is a way to make it look more constructed or whatever. Uh, but I was putting in a bunch of those like grassy cur uh, curb things and I will be putting more of those in shortly as well. In fact, right here, I decided they'd look really good uh, around these retaining walls. And you might be wondering why those retaining walls are even there. Again, I mentioned the word dystopia earlier. Um, I don't know why, but it just felt right to have these like imposing walls surrounding the residential area. It's a little dark, it's a little weird, and it's not like they're stop, you know, they're not being stopped from going in and out and out to the avenues and stuff like that, or out to the monorail, which we have as well. But it just sort of worked. There's just something about it that when you see the walls, it just makes it feel a little bit more dystopian, a little bit more authoritarian. Like there's, you know, the, the, the whole thing I think is beautiful, right? I really do. And I don't, I'm not just, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. I just think it looks cool. That It's very clean, right? The concrete is very bright, very clean. Not a lot of stains in it. The roads are the same. The grass is vibrant and healthy and green. Uh, there's plants everywhere. And you're about to see, I mean, very, very soon we're going to get into a lot more of the detailing with plants and stuff like that. But you have all of this stuff going on, all this life. You have all these people living here, all of these plants. But inside all that, you've got these walls. You've got these concrete retaining walls. You've got these monolithic uh, keys holding up the entire structure. So even though people are living here and we'll assume they're happy, we'll assume they're safe, even though there's plant life here and there's all these trees and, and it's surrounded by this forest, there's definitely a vibe to it that's like, hey, you know, are people allowed to leave this? Are people like safe here? Are they free here? Like, you know what I mean? Like that that's kind of the story that I wanted to give to this. And I didn't really want to give a story to my original tiered city. And I'm not saying that that is the strict story of this thing either. That's just that's kind of just the stuff that goes through my mind when I'm building it, if I'm totally honest. And again, leaning into the idea of this actually being somewhat pleasant yet authoritarian there's parks. There's parks everywhere. There's this big, there's this big pedestrian path that goes around this entire level right here. So if you want to go for a multi-kilometer run, then feel free. I'm moving into, like I said, stuff about the plants here. This is where I start surrounding everything in bushes and trees, and this is where I start putting in a lot of the stuff that just makes this come alive a little bit, makes it feel a little bit less flat. And something I wanted to do as well was actually leave some open space for for trees. So that is something that I end up doing. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of open green space as well. And I don't put bushes in it. I don't put like tall grass in it. I just kind of leave it open. And I'm I'm a little torn on that because you know me. I like overly detailing things, and sometimes that ruins it. But I didn't want to do that here for two reasons. Number one, I just wanted to try not doing it and number two i may or may not have run into the whole like hey you can't place any more trees thing uh quite a few times so you know that that definitely complicated things something i did do though was use this uh trimmed grass decal that we talked about in the recent episode of city skylines campus once again thank you to the person whose name has once again slipped my mind uh, who recommended this. You did say something in Discord. I don't know if I replied to you. I'd be meaning to. Either way, thank you so much for recommending that because it, I think, looks great in the uh, in the tiered city here. I think it looks really, really good. It just, again, it kind of brings in that idea that this whole thing is, you know, uh, perfectly uh, pristine and clean and bright and vibrant and 
There's luscious plant life. And there's these bright orange plants, these beautiful big trees. And we still have that, you know, contrasted against these monolithic walls and these retaining walls and just all this, these giant towers and all that stuff. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's a real, it's a, a beautiful contrast, I think. There's a word for it, and I can't remember what the word is, but I just think it is a beautiful, beautiful contrast. Anyway, uh, again, something I wanted to do with this building was get some more of those walls in there, but I also wanted to make it feel like this building took up the entirety of the space that it was in. There was obviously that grassy area around it. So putting some parking lots in there definitely helped that a little bit. And then I wanted to make it feel like there was actually a grassy area behind it. So what I decided to do was basically go in with the, again, the grass tiles and just sort of patch up this entire area to make it feel like it was sort of more alive. And then underneath that, I put in some actual grass texture to sort of blend it further. And that was that. It was time to start putting some trees around the edges there. Once all that was done, we went up a level to where we have some trams. And it was time to start filling in more of the empty space. And again, I wanted to use these bright uh, orange planters. I couldn't use them the whole way around because the terrain was a bit weird uh, by necessity. Otherwise, the roads would be kind of weird. I'm kind of glad I couldn't go the whole way around with it because it would have... Like, what I end up doing with it, I think, is just about right. Any more than what I do here, which is that. And I think it would have been way too much for this area because we already have that warm color coming through from the path. So it would have just been way too much. But something I did want to do was get a little bit of like a gazebo in here. Uh, and these areas, again, are quite symmetrical. And I also wanted to put down some tiles or some kind of pattern on the ground to break up that concrete. So again, just went in with uh, some decals there. I was going to try and get it to go right up to the road, but in the end, that doesn't quite work. So what I decided to do was just chop out a section and then go in and try and put like a border around the tiles, which only slightly works. But again, it kind of just did the job. Uh, the, the whole point of this build wasn't to be perfect. That's something I want to stress. It wasn't to make a functional city. It wasn't to make a, a perfect tiered city. It wasn't to get, you know, everyone talking about tiered cities or whatever. It was just to kind of have fun and revisit something I did three years ago. The channel turned seven years old recently, and a lot of people know this channel because of the tiered cities, and I've been thinking about it a lot, and I've been thinking about, you know, can I ever get back into Creative City Skylines? Well, maybe I can, because this was actually really fun, and I know it's silly, and I know it's not as impressive as it may have been three years ago, and I know it's sort of treading the same water. Is that the phrase? I don't know. Um, but I just wanted to see what it would look like if I tried this in 2019 with the tools that we have and we're about to go into some cinematics and I think it looks absolutely awesome but ladies and gentlemen before we do that I want to thank you so much for watching it's been my absolute pleasure I don't know if this commentary has been any use to anyone if I'm totally honest but it's been fun rambling about building in City Skylines again. So if you want to see more of this, uh, the comments, you know what, why not? They'll be turned on for this video as well. If you want to see more of this or more Let's Builds in something like The Sims or Minecraft or whatever, leave a comment below. If you're new around here, you know, maybe feel like uh, subscribing. It's entirely up to you. I would appreciate it. Either way, thank you so, so much for watching. Let's get into these cinematics. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.